Let's get some of the reaction from the uh, mainstream media. Here is uh, Al Sharpton, who is a host on. <laughs> uh, he is a, well, he's a race huckster and also a host on the televised mental institution known as MSNBC. But here he is in his limo uh, because I guess this was all happening on the fly. Well, I think uh, that this is tantamount to sticking a dagger in our back because what they have said now is that it is unconstitutional to even consider race. This is a tremendous setback that must be resisted by every corner, including the Department of Justice and including states. If it wasn't for considering race, this guy, <laughs> this guy would have no gig. But it's just so funny because the things that Martin Luther King Jr. were fighting against, the idea that universities would have quotas to keep black people out, things of that nature, are now the exact things that in 2023, when we've basically put racism to bed, Douglas, I think it's you that always say, but they're, you know, they're keeping it on life support. Um, here he is making the racist argument as the anti-racist. Peter, again, it's just, yeah, here we go. Yeah. And of course, did you notice how he was not only doing it in the back of a limousine, but he was also doing it while wearing a $5,000 suit. <laughs> now, that's the kind of oppression. It was I like a $75 jacket, by the way. Right. I mean, I, yeah, I could get into that kind of oppression, you know. Yeah, I could do that. Don't you also love, I mean, this is a man, let's remember, I, I don't think we need to linger over, over the so-called Reverend Al Sharpton. This yeah. is a man so shameless that whenever a young black uh, man in America dies, he literally pushes his way to the front of the funeral cortege and will be standing in front of the family at the coffin of a person he never knew, trying desperately to get his bit of the action. I mean, this is a man who's shameless for a living. And of course, he's furious uh, that, uh, that uh, in one way, that people are calling out the kind of race huckstering that he's done. But as, as you say, Dave, if, 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 if if this kind of so-called anti-racist racism didn't exist, uh, the Reverend Al Sharpton uh, wouldn't have any reason to get into his limousine in the morning. There, there's a phrase that I love that most people credit uh, Bill Maher for, but I, believe it or not, it was George W. Bush, the soft bigotry of low expectations. Uh, and watch this clip. This is also from MSNBC. This is contributor Eddie Goud on what will now happen at the universities. It, it, we will return to... Uh, elite institutions, more more specifically, uh, being the space for a particular population, for predominantly white and Asian students. We will begin to see a kind of segregated uh, uh, higher education landscape. And the irony, of course, uh, as I try to, I, I've anticipated this decision, but to hear it, I'm, I'm kind of still, I'm, I'm trying to manage my emotions. But, you know, this was just one remedy affirmative action, the only remedy to the legacy of discrimination and admissions in American higher education. He's actually saying the most depressing thing you could say to a young black person or brown person, which is, yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how hard you work, you're never gonna make it, which is so contrary to the millions and millions of black people who have succeeded and become millionaires and own their own businesses and everything else. It's, it's like, it's most soul crushing way of viewing the world. I think. Exactly, exactly. And it's also factually incorrect. If you look at the data for university admissions, white men are almost invisible on university campuses. They are no longer really going to university. They've opted out of academia. So I don't know where he's getting this idea from that university is going to be overrun by terrible, awful, oppressive white people. Most, most white men are not going to college, so he's got nothing to worry about.